Okay, I'm gonna do another Betsy DeVos video. This one, it's about admittance to schools and schools receiving voucher federal funding and then the schools discriminating and she is being interviewed by some kind of committee uh, in Senate, a Senate hearing. Let's go. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Madam Secretary, for testifying. And earlier you said that uh, if a charter school or a private school gets a, a dollar of federal aid, they have to follow all of the federal laws regarding discrimination. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. But those laws are somewhat foggy in that area, so I want to be absolutely clear about what you're saying. Are you saying that if you have a private school, it's private schools that generally set their own admission policies, that they will not be allowed under your program to discriminate against, to discriminate against LGBTQ students? Senator, I said it before and I'll say it again, that schools that receive federal funds must follow federal law. And I That's a poor answer, Betsy. I would like to help you with your messaging. I want you to pay particularly close attention to the part where he said, under your program. And the way you could have responded was, under my program, I will not, I am not taking on the responsibility or perhaps even legally responsible for enforcing federal discrimination laws. That is a responsibility of the whatever, Justice Department, whatever. She is just administering the vouchers. And then if the Justice Department, maybe there would be some, I don't know. But anyway. I just said federal law is foggy. So in your understanding of federal law. Uh, so federal law is foggy. It sounds like there's an issue of who's going to actually enforce that. The law, will such discrimination be allowed? On areas where law, the law is unsettled, this department is not going to be issuing decrees. So Okay, so she's not going to take a position. She's like, look, this is foggy. It doesn't say I'm in charge of determining discrimination and enforcing that. And you guys need to figure out who's supposed to be enforcing that. It's probably the Justice Department. So I understand uh, businesses that discriminate, that's generally the Justice Department, something like that. They prosecute. I don't know. So that please is a matter just for answer the that question. Is, that is, is, is a that matter for Congress and the courts. Is discrimination going to be allowed or not allowed? Well, the education department's not going to discriminate, but they're not in charge of all the schools. Under your not in charge of private schools, certainly. Understanding. On areas of unsettled law. Are you saying this Congress is such an area? And so just yes, she's saying this is unsettled law. It's just you basically said it was unsettled law. Congress and the Supreme is Court has to dis decide and settle. It's not that it's allowed. It's just unsettled how to deal with it. And you better decide how to deal with it. But You're refusing to answer the question? I, I'm going back to what I said earlier. On Let me, well, what you said earlier didn't help us since it's an area of unsettled law. But I So it's another area of unsettled law. I'm sure she has legal advisors that probably told her that. He probably has legal advisors that told him that because that's how he knows. He already said it's uh, foggy or unsettled or, and, um, she it sounds like he's like, well, will you do take care of this for me and just enforce this so we don't have to make any laws or whatever? And she's kind of like, no, we're not going to just take on this. OK, there's your answer. Maybe your senator, maybe you should think about the Justice Department enforcing some laws or something. I don't know. I think you just said where it's unsettled, such discrimination will continue to be allowed. It's not going to be allowed. Well, it depends what you mean by allowed. We're not the enforcement agency for discrimination. Out under your program, if that's incorrect. Not in my, my program does not have a service of enforcing discrimination law. That's not a feature or function of my program. Correct. Please correct it for the record. How about discrimination? But are my program in and of itself, at least internally, does not do any discrimination. That's for sure. And I'm sure if it did, you know, that would be a, sort of an internal affairs department issue. Or they would investigate that. Based on religion, will such discrimination be allowed with, with charter or private schools? <sighs> Is he serious? He wants the education department to infor investigate and, and enforce private school discrimination? Man, I, you know what she should say? Well, we are investigating several uh, Islamic schools. He's like, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> 
again, on for schools that receive federal funds, federal law must be followed. What is that law in this case, to your understanding, will such religious discrimination be allowed? Answer the question. Schools that Stop treating her like a piece of animal meat or something. Stop treating her like that, man. That receive federal funds will follow federal law. Okay, you're, you're refusing to answer the question. I think that's... It's very important for the public to know that today the Secretary of Education before this committee refused to affirm that she would put forward a program that would ban discrimination based on LGBTQ status of students or would ban discrimination based on Sir, religion. Sir, that's not what I said. Well, that, that is not what I said. I've asked you to clarify and you've refused Discrimination to do so. in any form is wrong. I don't support discrimination in any form. Does your program ban such discrimination? Yes, sir. Well, not all forms of discrimination are wrong. There's immoral forms and moral forms. For example, if you have a student that's misbehaving, that student needs to be uh, reprimanded. And that is a form of discrimination. But if you reprimand them solely because of their race, that is not an ethical form of discrimination. So... It's important that we understand the meaning of the words we're using. Yes or no? What program are you talking about? Your charter school and your private school grant program. As I said before, and let me say it again, schools Same that receive thing, federal funds when you're need, not the question, need to follow help. federal law, period. You have a uh, parent. So she's just giving a blanket statement. In other words, she's not giving any method for enforcement. So what he should have asked is, will you enforce this? federal law and she maybe she would have said no because as they both agreed there's nothing in there about enforcement nobody is tasked with enforcing this parent that wants to go to a particular school a for-profit school or not-for-profit school not a public school would that school be required to take the student um, are these schools that are receiving federal funds they have a parent that you're proposing a voucher system apparently which would be federal funds that the parents would this is the issue too vouchers are bad because they're bad compared to the education savings account and tax credit program because it's it all it does is and in, in a sense it almost it's you could almost think of it as a government takeover of the private schools so it's it's actually in many ways worse because now you have to understand the government gets much more control over what those private schools can do. And, and I hope what they're not using that for is discrimination. But there's also other things that come with that. But, also, you know, I mean, what if it's a Catholic school and they're like, we're not going to have non-Catholics? I don't know. I mean, that's discrimination. It's not necessarily the worst kind of discrimination, I guess, because it is a Catholic school. But, I mean... It's just ridiculous. Would, would well, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to understand the, the hypothetical question. Well, the hypothetical if, there are, are, if there are schools that are receiving federal funds, they need to follow, follow federal law. So She's saying what they need to do. She's not talking about enforcement. So a private for-profit school would have to take a disabled student. They, would, they couldn't reject anyone who showed up with a voucher. Well, wait a second. What if your school only does mountain climbing? Or, or, or not mountain climbing. What if, I don't know, a, a disabled student? Like mentally disabled? What if it's a school for the gifted? This is, this is the whole point. This is the whole problem with one size fits all, how they do the government. Sure. Any school that is receiving federal funds has to follow federal law, period. But what does that mean? I just See, what does that mean? In other words, she's just repeating the law. And the law doesn't say anything about enforcement. Certainly not enforcement in her department. A specific question. Would they have Just to accept the Just what I said, that they have to follow the federal laws. So they'd have to accept. So she's trying not to point out the fact the law doesn't say anything about enforcement. She's just repeating the law back to them, and they know what the law is. To disabled child, they would have to have an individual education plan, which they would follow. It would be exactly like a public school. Is that your position? If the school is accepting federal funds, well, let me ask another and question. Le, le, well, let me let me also refer to the fact that states have implemented programs that um, for s disabled students that parents willfully elect into and opt into. 
parents are making those decisions, there is no requirement that. No, but I'm saying the parents decide they want to go to the school, and they come up. Does the school for the disabled have to accept students that are not disabled? See, this is the problem with one size fits all and no discrimination. And the school w would have to accept that student. If the student had uh, severe disabilities, they would have to accommodate their program. What about a school for the deaf? What about a school for the, you know, this is ridiculous. Just, just let the people send the students to the school they want to send them. The, the parents send them to the school they want to, okay? Yeah, there might be some out there where there's questionable practices, like, you know, these some of these schools that said we don't want homosexual and transsexual students. But uh, for God's sakes, man, we can we got to look at the bigger picture. Ram, to deal with that student's special disability. Is that your position? If a school is accepting federal funds, is, they are you, going to follow federal laws. So the, the, the voucher. How are they going to follow federal laws? Voluntarily? That is used to pay is you can. I will to be repeat federal. again. If they're accepting federal funds, now, they'll follow federal laws. Let me ask you a question. You would. I don't know, Betsy. You sound a little bit lacking in confidence because the answers you're giving are not the answers I think I would give. Unless I mean, you're just. <sighs> Consider that voucher federal funds, requiring them to follow federal law. Well, first of all, there is no voucher program currently, so this is all a hypothetical no, question. No, it's not hypothetical. It, it is. No, because you're going to publish one. rules, Madam Secretary. Yeah, we don't have freedom of education. We don't even have voucher level freedom of education right now. I mean, there's like limited pro. She's, I don't know, she's at the federal level? Aren't these done at the state level? That's going to say you have to follow federal laws if you accept this voucher, which is federal funds. Maybe she's really afraid that they're going to try to kill the voucher program. You know, I'd almost, I'd hold out for the education savings account because I don't want to see a government take over private schools. I've said before that if a school is accepting federal funds, they have to follow federal laws. So let me ask you a question. A for-profit school accepts a, a voucher because that's what you're talking about. He's got to ask a more specific question giving the parent the chance to move out of a public system into a private system, that would be considered by you the acceptance of federal funds requiring the school to follow all the requirements that a public school would follow. Don't just repeat it again, Betsy. Please, please, please. Any school that accepts federal, no! federal funds will follow federal laws, period, without discrimination. Oh, my God. She's just repeating the same thing and repeating the law. I don't know. I guess she's just trying to, she's just, maybe she's just doing this because she's like, I know you guys are full of shit, so I'm just going to repeat the law back to you. Your answer is yes. So the voucher system will trigger for-profit private schools or not-for-profit private schools to accept all students, as public schools do, to impose, to follow all the rules, particularly with regard to disabled children. That's the only. See, this is why this is vouchers are bad. I mean, look, schools should not private schools should not have to accept this. The disabled. This is re, especially a small like how are you supposed to have a specialized school or a small school or all these different schools if you have to cater to the people with special needs and disabilities? It doesn't make any sense. There's people with serious physical and mental impairments. conclusion I can draw from your answers, which are rather cryptic. Let me turn now to the uh, higher education issues. Uh, the uh, Pell Grant you seem to be uh, <coughs> suggesting as the appropriate mechanism and the only appropriate mechanism, because most of the other federal programs are zeroing out. The supplemental uh, educational opportunity grants, cutting federal student aid in half, and yet you take 3.8 billion dollars from the surplus of the Pell Grants, rather than uh, providing for additional uh, larger Pell Grants, et cetera. How does that make college more affordable? Well, sir, the um, proposal is to take $3.8 from the surplus, leaving $4.9 in the surplus. 
And if there is a desire to increase the pelvic... Okay, I don't think I want to get into any of that. There might be more good stuff, but I think that's enough for this video. Anyway, uh, Betsy Devo, she's, uh, you know, I kind of like her ideas or direction in a way, but she seems, to, I think I could help her a lot with her messaging, her answers, and uh, her positions, maybe some interesting stuff on education as well as far as tax, you know, education uh, savings accounts and whatnot. But, you know, that that's all to law. She's a, what, an administrator, right? I mean, she can be a, maybe a spokesperson to some degree, but that's, that's still it. Anyway.